I'm Michael Bryant. In this edition of The Regal Word, I'm going to share with you three questions that every believer in Christ should be prepared to answer. One of which is, how strong is your faith? The purpose of the questions are meant to inspire self-examination. Now you may ask, why should I examine myself? Let's take a look at two scriptures. Both are found in the book of 2 Corinthians. The first, chapter 13, verse 5, and it reads as follows. Examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you? Unless indeed you are disqualified. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10, reads as follows. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. The goal of self-examination is to reveal to you areas in your life where you should make it an adjustment. Now the choice is yours whether you make the adjustment or not, but you only get one chance. You only have one life to live before as a Christian, you appear before the judgment seat of Christ. And it's in our best interest to look to improve ourselves because once we're standing before Christ, we no longer have the option, we no longer have the opportunity to make any corrections that are needed. In addition to that, have you ever felt like you're not as blessed as you should be? Have you ever felt like your prayers are not being answered? One of the reasons why your prayers are going unanswered, one of the reasons why you're not as blessed as you could be is because there's an area in your life where God is waiting on you to change it. God is waiting on you to conform to his guidelines, to his commandments. And once you do those things, you'll find that your prayers are no longer going unanswered. You'll find that those blessings that God had stored up for you, they now have been released and you're feeling overwhelmed at the sheer volume and grace and mercy and blessings from God that he had intended for you all along. He was just waiting on you. Now I know the title of this video is how strong is your faith, but there's two questions that you probably should answer. You probably should consider before you answer the question, how strong is your faith? And the first question is, how are you living? Why is that so important? Let's take a look at two more scriptures. The first scripture, Hebrews chapter 11, verse one says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You cannot be a Christian. You cannot be a believer of Jesus Christ without having faith. Faith here is do you trust God? Do you take his word as gold? Do you believe the things that God promises will come to pass? Do you believe that Jesus Christ is the means for you to be saved? Do you believe that you can have eternal life with God? Do you believe that Whatever you need or whatever you want, that God will provide. Those are the substances, the believing, the trusting, the confidence. That's the substance of faith. The evidence has to do with the question of how are you living? Because if you believe and you have faith and you trust in God, then the way that you are living should show that you have faith in God. The other scripture that is very relevant to the question, how are you living, 
is found in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7, and it reads as follows. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by the Spirit, not by the flesh. We walk by God's commandments, not by what the world is doing. When things look bad to us, and we know that God has something else in store for us and he wants us to go straight instead of to the left or the right. We rely on God. We trust in God. We believe that God knows what's best for us. We believe that God has every good intention for us and that he's not going to steer us wrong. And so instead of choosing to do what the world is doing, Instead of leaning to our own understanding, we say to ourselves, we're going to acknowledge God. We know that God is for us, not against us. And I'm going to do, even though it doesn't make sense to me, even though I don't see where this is going, you choose to walk by your faith because you know that God is the creator of the heavens and the earth and everything belongs to him everything, all power belongs to God. And when Jesus Christ rose from the dead, he said, all authority is in my hands. So when you consider those things and you have a scale and you weigh, if walking by sight versus walking by faith is put before the Christian, the Christian chooses to walk by faith. And when you walk by faith, the evidence of your faith, the work of your faith should show that you have faith. If when you answer the question, how are you living? If any part of your response doesn't align to God and his commandments, love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love God. Honor your mother and your father so that you might have long life. The commandments that Jesus Christ brought forth in the New Testament, the letters that the Apostle Paul and Peter wrote, if anything in your life doesn't align to that, then this is an opportunity for you to make changes. Your life should reflect the faith that you have in God. Let's move on to the next question. How strong is your praise? Praise is very important because it is an expression of your faith. It is the evidence of the things that are not seen. When you're in a time of trouble, and if you're not praising God in advance of your deliverance, then that means at least three things. It means that you don't believe in God. It means that you're so focused on the trouble that you are not exercising your faith by praising God. Or it means that you are withholding praise from God. In the event that you are delivered from the time of trouble, it has nothing to do with luck. It has nothing to do with fortune. It has nothing to do with the universe, nor does it have anything to do with your destiny. It has everything to do with God's grace, God's mercy, and his love for you. And it is for that reason that you ought to praise God for being God. God is not like man. He is faithful. If God says he loves you, he's going to show he loves you regardless of what you do. He's going to give you every opportunity to come to him. And that is why during a time of trouble, when you don't believe in him, when you don't praise him in advance, or you withhold praise, he delivers you. It's him showing his love for you. 
Now, when you do praise God in advance of deliverance in the time of trouble, that's measurable. You can measure how strong your faith is. Because if you praise God, but it's small praise, it's weak praise, it's praise with little volume, it's praise with little confidence, that's an indication of small faith. When you offer God average praise, it's, it's, it's bigger than small praise, but it's not much bigger. The energy is bigger than small praise, but it's not much bigger. The confidence is bigger than small praise, but it's not much. That's when you have average faith. But let me tell you something about when you have strong faith. When you have strong faith, you, your knowing that God is going to deliver you changes you. It transforms you. And your knowing becomes you expect to be delivered. You know that you're going to be delivered, but now you expect God to deliver you. And when you couple that with what God has done for you in the past, what he's doing for you in the present, and what his promises are for you in the future, and you begin to think of the goodness of God and what all of those things he has done for you, you can't help but open your mouth, lift your hands in praise, and begin to just praise God vigorously. And when you do that, God takes notice of your praise. And God begins to inhabit. The Bible says God inhabits the praise of his people. God will come to you and tarry with you and fellowship with you. And then guess what happens? Your praise, you move from a state of praise to a state of worship. And you begin to worship God because he's God. You totally forget about that you stand in need of deliverance. And your whole focus goes to God. And when your whole focus goes to God, you don't care anymore about deliverance. You don't care about anything because God is there. And that's what God wants from you. He wants to be with you. He wants to fellowship with you. And do you not know that when you are exhibiting strong faith, when you are exhibiting vigorous praise, you move God. God will work a miracle out because you asked him to, because you are showing that you have confidence, that you have trust in him. When you, mm, let me tell you, when you show that you trust God, God is not going to let you down. He will move heaven and he will move earth to make what you ask come to pass. So I encourage each and every one of you out there today. Yes, we are in a time of trouble, but don't focus on the trouble. Increase and exercise your faith. And by exercising and increasing your faith, you will begin to praise God in a vigorous manner. And you will begin to worship God. And God, who's always near you, will come and inhabit the praise and he will do great things for you. Don't be concerned with what's going on. Protect yourself. Do what you know is right. But have faith in God and know that he will bring you through. So I will say to you, if you have been touched by this message, please like the video. There's a little thumbs up icon below. Press it. Please share the video with your friends, family, and loved ones. Feel free to leave comments. I touched on two things, but I didn't touch on the last one, which is how strong is your faith? If anyone asks you how strong is your faith, tell them that God is perfecting, God is working on you for his glory.